What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and I'm gonna aim to make this one a fast one because I wanna get to the point I'm tired of dwelling on this topic. I've talked about it so much you would think that I would have already done this video, but I'm an idiot and I never did. Today we're gonna do two direct comparisons between a static pressure optimized fan and an airflow optimized fan on the same radiator, on the same device with the exact same RPM settings, running the same test with the same ambient temp. If you can't tell, we got a lot of constants going on here. And we're gonna see once and for all what kind of differences there really are based on fan type. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got an EVGA GTX 1080 hybrid and I'm using that card because, well, it's an all-in-one loop on a graphics card. They get hotter, faster. I can do this test more quickly and it's very, very consistent. And, the, and like CPU, which is doing a lot of other random things, but that's besides the point. Anyway, it's got a 120 millimeter all-in-one radiator in there. It's a 30 mil radiator. So it's gonna give us a pretty good example of what kind of temperature deltas we're looking for here. Delta or the difference between the two is what we're really after here. Now for the fans, I've got two identical fans here. Well, with the exception of the blade design. Uh, they are both Corsair 120 millimeter quiet edition fans. So they're gonna be running a max of 1200 RPM, uh, except one is an SP and one is an AF, airflow and static pressure. So we're gonna do our first test here on heaven. We're gonna let the thing run at 4K until the temperatures uh, equalize at a particular temperature and wherever that may be, the max temp. And then we're gonna compare our baseline with the static pressure fan, because that's the fan that people say you have to go with. Then we're gonna slap on the air cooled or the airflow fan, and we're gonna see what the differences really are. And I have to make sure, obviously with my thermometer, that the room ambient temp is the same. There's a lot of variables here we've gotta account for. This is like high school science. All right, enough talking. Let's get to it. That was stupid. Transition. Okay, so this thing's been running for a while now, actually. It looks like we've got a baseline of about 49 to 50 C. It's kind of bouncing back and forth right there. We might have actually hit 51 for just like a split second. I'm gonna check that now. I know you guys probably can't see it too good. It's actually in 4K now. It's really small. Max temperature 51, like I said, but it flattened out right at 49, 50, 49, 50, 49, 50, and that's where it stayed. So that's our baseline. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna do the exact same test with with this fan, that's how, that's how it works. That's how compare and contrast works. If you guys are in high school and you do science class, you know what that, okay, shut up, Jay, just do it. Now I've just started the test here with the airflow fan, but the one thing worth pointing out, and this isn't a surprise to me, I expected this, but one thing worth pointing out is one of the reasons why I put paper on these radiators like that is it gives you a visual representation of the amount of pressure coming through the fan and the amount of airflow so you can see Kind of a, a comparison between the two, if one if the paper's being pushed up higher with one fan than the other, that means there's more airflow. And you can see that with the AF fan, the paper is not moving as far as the SP fan. And they're both running at 1200 RPM. They're running at their max right now. But the question is, does that equate to different temperatures? Well, it's running and we'll come back at the end and we'll talk about the results. Okay, our test has been running long enough here. We've got a lock temperature of about 55 degrees Celsius. Um, it bounces down to 54 every now and then and comes back up to 55. And then there's a scene where the islands are kind of floating in the sky. Whenever that scene happens, it pops up to 56 and then comes back down to 55. So if we compare the two, that is obviously a temperature delta of five degrees Celsius if we look at the max with the little spikes and temps that we saw, 51 versus 56. And we're seeing about three to four uh, Celsius delta between the average temperatures. Now on the surface, that leaves a lot of room for argument that yeah, static pressure fans are obviously better for radiators. No one's ever argued that. In fact, they are optimized static pressure for a reason. But the whole point of this here was to see just how much of a difference there really is. Now let's take a look at the setup here real quick to understand the results a little bit more. We have a graphics card that was overclocked to 2,088 megahertz, max voltage, and the memory was running at plus 400. So we're putting a decent amount of heat, well, although the memory is not touching the the cooling plate in this test, I overclocked it anyway, just for the hell of it. So that's, that's what I do. On a 120 uh, millimeter radiator, that's only 30 millimeters thick. So we are already asking a lot of the radiator. Now, if we were to take the radiator and make that a 240 rad, we would have seen much closer results on the temperatures because radiator surface area is more important than the type of, I think I just hit the mic. This video is full of fail. The radiator surface area is a bit more important than the fan blade design. Now, obviously, if you have a choice, optimize it. Go with the right stuff at the start. But I just wanted to put some people at ease that if they got the wrong fan, 
uh, they don't need to freak out. They're not gonna ruin their system. Now, if you wanna know a little bit more about things like push-pull, because that's obviously the next question, then check out this video right here. I've already done a comparison of push-pull and push-pull on this exact same setup, so you can see how that compares. There's a lot of confusion when it comes to fan setup. I've done videos about fan setups and stuff. I mean, gosh, there's, there's so many videos about fans on this channel because there's constant debates over it. But a lot of people get really caught up on this stuff and they really start to obsess over one little thing and they kind of miss the big picture. Anyway, worst case scenario here, tiny radiator, hot graphics card running overclocked. You saw we saw a max of 5C delta on spikes and only about 3C on our average temps. That's not bad. Like I said, if I put a 240 in here and put two SPs versus, I almost did it again, versus two SPs and two airflows, we would have probably seen only about a two degree difference, maybe even one. Looks like I've got a topic for another video. That's okay, this, this conversation will never die, so we can just keep talking about it till the end of days. All right guys, thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next video.